And our picture is one of concern. You know, the, the, the video isn't accurate. I mean, the problem with, with the legislation is if the UK leaves the European Union, it is automatically, it must leave open skies. And therefore, as things currently stand, there is no flight rights between the UK and Europe and vice versa. And it is a guillotine. It happens at the end of March. Now, the UK government, therefore, has to negotiate a bilateral, not with individual states, but with the EU27. But and there is no sign of any bilateral being negotiated and no sign of any agreement. But you're uh, part of the EU, you're Irish, yep. uh, you're a leading, well, probably Ireland's leading businessman. You can go to Barney, you're part of the 27 and say, you go faster. It's up to you to go faster. We are. But remember, the French and the Germans are there going, Monsieur Barnier, slow down. If we cause the British Airways and EasyJet and Ryanair some uh, interruption for a period of months, and remember, what's key about aviation is aviation comes up six months before March 2019. Yeah. We're filing our schedules for summer 19 in September of 18, and if we don't have the right to fly, we will be cancelling those flights. But it's in everybody's interest. It's, it's in everybody's in, interest. It's in European problem. Airlines' that interest is the to fly free as well. That is the misunderstanding here in the UK. It's in everybody's interest. It is not in everybody's interest. It's in the European interest, certainly the European airlines, who are actively lobbying against this to not have an agreement. I mean, it's not going to last for a couple of years. It could be for a couple of months in the summer of 19. But the British people will be facing, when you're booking your holidays for summer 19, the choice would be drive to Scotland or get a ferry to Ireland. Well, neither of these would be a problem, right enough. But let's just—we don't have capacity in Ireland. Just, just, just stick with this one because yeah. you are an outlier in this. And I'm an uh, outlier because everybody else is in denial. They're not. But this is but the, you're, you're this outlier, is the but legal you're, but you're, reality. But, the, but there are other legal realities which we'll come on to. Okay. Um, but I mean, you uh, attended a meeting at the European Parliament uh, last month. And we've got a clip of uh, Willie Walsh taking a diametrically opposed view to you, and you're in the shot, so you, you know what he says, and he mm. says it's going to be fine. Let's see what he had to say. With policy support, it ought to be relatively straightforward to agree a deal on aviation that will be ready when the UK leaves the EU. With policy support, it should be relatively easy. There is now, you're, policy support. But That's you the may problem. find that there is actually policy support when you see Chris Grayling tomorrow morning. Look, I very much hope there will be. But, I mean, Chris Grayling and the UK government at the moment haven't been able to negotiate the divorce bill, can't agree any kind of pre... Uh, no agreement on whether the ECJ governs European citizens' rights here in the UK. They haven't even got out of the starting but, blocks yet. Never mind doing the sectoral agreement for aviation. But, but and what is different, sorry, but respect, what's different about aviation, there is not a fallback position. Yeah. It's not covered by WTO. The UK is out of open skies. They have to negotiate an agreement. But the UK is not yet out of open skies, and they will perhaps negotiate an agreement as well as the fact that several airlines, including uh, IAG, which controls British Airways, will have a base within the European Union, EasyJet will have a 50 bet. Untrue. It, they yes, it is. The both, both of them do now. That they, they will allow them to fly the way they're flying just now. That's absolutely incorrect. Because what happens, there's two issues here. There's flight rights and there's ownership restrictions. Okay. IAG's current ownership setup, which is a Spanish airline owns British Airways Liberia, will not survive a hard Brexit. The, Euro, the Europeans, that in your opinion? I say, it's in my opinion. Look, nobody would like there to be an agreement more than I. Yeah. But they, you're not recognising the reality that the continental Europeans see aviation as a way of putting pressure on the British people. They'll put pressure on the British people around September, October of 2018 because there will be no agreement. Right, let me just talk a bit about this business about ownership. Yeah. Because Ryanair has a big issue here. In order, oh, really? yeah, in order to have the ability to fly from one destination to another mm. in the European Union, 50% plus of the company has to be owned and controlled by EU nationals. That's true. Ryanair is not. Ryanair is at 38%. Well, we're about 40%. But no, we, we are, we are yeah. low. You're but too low. But we're buying back 5% of our stock every year, Kirsty. If I have to buy back 10% of my stock from so, UK holders, that's not a challenge for me. So wait a minute, me. you'll be taking money out of UK pension funds that support Ryanair, will you? That's what you'll be doing. No, we'll be buying back our own shares. It's a so, process we engage in on an moment, annual basis. At the moment, you do not comply with the regulations which will allow you to fly 
between cities in the European Union. You're missing the point. At the moment, we do because British shareholders are treated as EU citizens. Once the yes, I accept that. In a hard Brexit, if the UK leaves, yes, we will have to force Absolutely. our UK shareholders to sell. But the EasyJet structure, which allows them to own an Austrian air, will yes. also have to be sold down. EasyJet cannot own an Austrian AOC, but they, and a BA will not be allowed to own a, But they can have an Austrian uh, company, which is 50% owned by European nationals. Yes. Exactly. So, but so EasyJet they can, will so only own a minority of it. Ah, but, but and that, cannot that can control change, it either. But that but can change. You're missing the point. The, the point is, at the moment, you can do this, but after Brexit, unless can you can... continue unless, to do it. No, no, after Brexit, unless Ryanair is owned 50 plus percent by EU nationals, yes. you cannot fly city to city. And you're telling your passengers... That's not a difficulty. You're telling your passengers that you're what going to own more than 50 percent. What I won't be able to do in a hard Brexit, Kirsty, is fly from the Euro Europe to the UK or from the UK to Europe. It's the flight rights is the major challenge for us, not ownership. If I have to buy another 10% of my stock back over the next two years, it's exactly what I plan to do anyway. That's not a challenge for Ryanair. We'll be fine. The point is, who's going to be flying between the European Union and the UK if the British government does not negotiate an agreement in about 12 months' time? Right. And they have no idea how to negotiate that agreement. Well, I'm sure you'll be able to give them a hand. Let's look at Ryanair. Um, hmm. You said um, you change the cult when you change the culture. If I'd known that being nice to customers was going to work so well, I'd have done it ages ago. So tell me then, why have you got this new policy of different pricing between aisle, middle and window seats? So therefore, if you are an adult flying with a child that should be sitting beside you because you won't want them bolting around the plane at the yeah. age of five, one of those seats is more expensive than the other. Well, it's not. The child seat is free. Uh, it has to be a supplement. No, the child seat is free. The adult pays the reserve seat uh -huh. because... Yes, yeah. the, 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 yes exactly. Yes, the child seat is free, but the adult pays the extra. Yes. And that's entirely fair. That sounds like sophistry to me. But it's not sophistry. It's taking place in a year at the moment. And the difficulty is we've more than 50% of our people now buying, selecting their reserve seat in a year when we're reducing our fares by four euros a seat. Uh, wait, but wait we a have minute. nothing. Listen, look, we'll be reporting, it, it, we will be reporting July numbers tomorrow. Our load factor is 97%. Yes. No, our flights I mean, are full, I, Kirsty. I, you, you, I'm, I'm not are, suggesting your flights are not full, but are love they the fairly service, full? Who love the service and adore the prices. Yeah, okay. well, they can't actually, get enough of it, actually. You're, you're, but actually, what you have been reporting in the papers, as because of the random nature of your algorithms and everything else, obviously, is that you end up splitting families up because we have never split up a family. I mean, oh, no, it's just, it's no, just no. not true. No, no, can I just say that's just not true? No, can I just that say I've spoken to somebody that's been split up? Untrue. If the child was under 12, they can't be split up, they must sit together. Right, well, um, I, I think there may be quite untrue. a lot of tweets after this to say that people Tweet away, really it's untrue. Up. And the other thing you're unhappy about is these pesky children coming on with bits of luggage. No, we're delighted. So you actually. Why? We don't we, mind those. What we, they have so few, we have so few free seats. The thing I'm really concerned about is whether any children will be flying with us from the UK to Europe in April 2019 or vice versa, at right. even lower prices. Michael Leary, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Kirsty. Steve.